setting the stage, the captain of Crusher's GC and the 2024 U.S. Open champion, Bryson DeShamber! Gosh, I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> Won the Saudi Open on the Asian Tour in April. And he won the International Series event in Macau in March, beating David Pouge in a playoff. Here's a man with nine career wins, three of them on the DP World Tour. 33 years of age from Sacramento, and he is making the most of his chance. I remember John Catlin playing as a reserve for Charles Howell III, who's injured. If he were to go on to win this, he, he gets those points. That would move him right at the top 24 number. Move him to 20th currently. Yeah, another beautiful shot. This guy's making this look so easy. So we're well having done. a day. And the Englishman six at the par. He shares the lead with Abraham Answer for the time being at least. Now this is Abraham answer to stay at seven under and in all likely have the overnight lead and that is wonderfully done Abe answer with a 64. this is what live golf's about man I, I had a vision of this two three years ago seeing what the potential could be and this is just the start i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So I'm super excited for the, the future of Live. in-game live prime time here on the grid on a terrific Tuesday. Scott Wetzel, Day Sheriff Pam for the next two glorious hours right up until 10 p.m. Eastern time. We got baseball, WNBA tonight, little NFL preview for sure. Same game parlays, black clouds. We got a good buddy, Zizik Fercasi, working over at the uh, Three Letter Network from the, the NFL channel. Uh, Cam Stewart will join us as well, back from vacation. How about that? We got one of our favorite betting systems in play in two games tonight we oh got boy. the white Sox back in play how great is that mm. and then uh we got something oh boys in vegas is it a gift or a trap we'll do something we did again last year we'll do it again this year and see how things uh will turn out so a lot to get to over the next two hours as it always is here's my partner in crime rocket what's that minnesota twins i can say can't see the oh let a brace okay there you go let a brace uh out let a brace. Uh, little yeah. dale murphy action there very nice how about very nice that? Can you see through? It's nighttime in nice. Pittsburgh behind me, but this is that's what this jersey is right there. Good call. It's either him, Bob Horner, Gene Garber. Yes. How about that? All right. There's yeah, that. Nice. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good uh, trifecta right trifecta. there, Braves. Yeah, if you're watching the show again anywhere, uh, tweet at us at Opposite Picks, at Sports BK, and Sig, and at Sports Grid, your favorite Braves era guy with this uniform, not named Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy's too easy. That was good, yeah. but that was the one that you hit him with. Um, a lot of games tonight, a lot of baseball. Good yep. to see you, sir. Uh, you want to get to the WNBA right away? Let's get that. Let's get that going out of the way. Ace is laying a huge number against the Wings. Who, Scott? Are they the worst team in the league? They might be. Uh, in fact, they, I think they lost the other day to um, who was it? They were they both had six wins. So. Oh. Um, Man. But I tell you, the Aces have not covered. They've been like an awful covering machine. Yes. Um, they won, cost me an over the other day. I don't know if you saw the end oh. of that game, right? Yeah. Uh, I get even aggravation in WNBA games. So I got the over Aces versus Chicago. It's 162 or so. They're tied. Okay. Well, actually, the Aces are leading by three, five seconds left. Chicago gets a three to tie it at 75 with one second left going to overtime. I'm going to hit my over 162, right? Yep. Uh, the Aces, I don't know who their head coach is, but the guy or gal is a genius. He or she is better than a lot of NBA head coaches. They design a play. They get a layup. 
with 1.1 second inbounding the ball, and they win 77-75, and there goes my over bet. So I'm a little upset about the Aces. It was a perfect play. Uh, she cut right yep. behind the pick and, and, you know, did it all in one motion. Asia got the basket. Aces win. Your game doesn't go over. Speaking no, of no. another game, it's not going over. Giants and Brewers. Wessel, this one looks so easy. Webb, Myers, Giants can hit. Brewers aren't really hitting. This one, look at these ERAs. I mean, this is just really. And you talk about, you know, numbers, seven and a half. They're betting this thing over. It's a seven and a half minus a quarter. Eight, couple places just moved. I don't know. This seems pretty easy to me. Uh, it's an under, but yeah. let's say you. There were two. There were two today, Dave, that kind of stuck it out like a sore thumb with these over-unders, right? Let me see if you can give me the other one. This this was one. Mm-hmm. Was there? If I, if I tell you it, then it'll be like, oh, yeah, you're right. But did you notice another one that didn't make much sense? Well, the Braves game. No. Right? Well, they, they, yeah, they, no, they always, for whatever reason, they never make the Braves seven and a half. God bless them. You know, all they do is they, you know, create more unders, 29 more unders than overs, and they keep on giving us eight. No, how about uh, oh, Houston and uh, the, the uh, who are they playing there? Uh, Verlander in you know, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, Verlander and Nola, over-under was nine. Now, I know it's not Justin Verlander from 10 years ago, but Correct. Verlander and Nola and it's nine? Yeah. I thought that was a little little weird. What would you have made it? Eight, eight and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Nine's a big uh, number. We don't see too many nines is. anymore. No, but in Philadelphia you do, especially, I mean, you just said it. It's more of a play on Verlander, you, like right. making it too low, prone to giving up bombs, long, you know, home runs and stuff. I think it's more of a protection against that. So the debate was between eight and a half and nine. Ozmakers went nine. Uh, what's the in-game number for that right now? I don't know, let me double check here. Uh, da, 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 da. it is eight and a half. Is so, eight there and half. you go. We're right on pace. Four. So four nothing. Yeah. Um, the other Here's game. An interesting thing. What's that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no go ahead. Well, I'll oh. get to my. It's, it's, it's something about the playoffs and, and Houston could be in a little bit of I trouble. Gonna, but I was going to do Rangers and White Sox because yeah, go ahead. You know, yep. It's just print money. Me and Ranieri said it last night. It was ten in a row before last night that they've lost on the run line. 11 in a row. Again, last night, they lose. Tonight, Rangers, short favorite. Haney on the mound. Mm-hmm. Six and six in Haney's last 12 starts, Texas is. But look at that stat. I'll let you read that one. The White Sox, what does that say? What is that trend? <laughs> one and 64 when the opposition <laughs> scores four runs, right? I got to tell you, I had the game on last night, right? <laughs> So the uh, Tigers score five in the eighth inning and, and they win uh, six to three or seventh inning, actually. So yeah. I'm watching the post game, Dave, right? And, and uh-huh. it's, it's Ozzie Gian, Scott Posednik, if you remember him, and, and then oh, yeah. the host. And, yeah. I, you know, I'm not making fun of them at all. This is really praising them. But they were all just like, you know, even the host said, you know, I, I've done a thousand of these post game shows. I don't know what to say anymore. I, I, they were all right. like, they had a half yeah. hour to kill too. This wasn't like a two minute post game show. They had no. like, a, they were just like, so how about some of these stats they rattled off? God bless them. They're eight and thirty eight against the AL Central. Somehow or another, five and five against the Guardians. They take the Cleveland games wow. out, and they're three and thirty three. Wow. They've uh, blown a major league leading 48 leads. No oh one my. has had more leads and blown that 48, oh including 21 from the seventh inning on, which is oh the my. most in, in baseball. I mean, it's just, they were just going through a whole slew of them. 70 games under 500. 70. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Second fastest I- to 100 losses. I saw that uh, on the trend screen, and I, I just was like, I don't even know. I've never seen anything like this. This is, uh, I told Rainier yesterday, and I, I told Matt on BVB, there's like 10 million reasons why uh, things I don't miss in the book. Going to work all summer and continuing into what is going to be this weekend when we have college football back and next weekend we have NFL 
and all that other stuff, needing the White Sox just day after day after day. It not doesn't matter what you make the number. You can't take a bet on the White Sox. Me and Ranieri immediately told everybody here watching the show last night, if you're watching us, bet the Tigers right now because they had a 2 nothing lead. You just yep. said it. They've blown all these games. We took the Tigers plus 275 yesterday. Oof, in the really? 50, wow. Plus 275. Yeah, it was a wow. gift. Plus one and a half was plus 140. Should have had Vinny screenshot that because we put that up and yeah. we were like, man, this is good. So we got a bunch of thank yous uh, on the socials for that. So that, that was good. If you're watching on the app or you're watching, you know, on the, the X or whatever, stay stay alert because Vinny and Matty G are going to keep us alert if the White Sox get a lead. We might have to ring the goal. Or... I was going to say, you know what? The, that's that's the way to bet. Like tonight's not too bad. One forty, one fifty. That that's actually a modest number. But you know, when you get those two tens and two forties and two, that's the way to bet the Tigers, uh, or, or against the White Sox rather. You know, yep. because their starting pitching actually isn't that bad. It, it's the bullpen is just bullpen. atrocious. So the starters are going five. They have the leads a lot of time, and a bullpen comes in, and that's it. Forget about it. So. All right, just getting underway. Hour number one, a lot to get to. We'll check out all the baseball games. We come back in game live. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on he doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins. In game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sharepad, just getting underway. A little baseball here, Dave. Uh, one of my favorite betting systems uh, is in play twice, as, as a matter of fact. One technically, uh, but it, you know it should count. That is, we bet on a team they got swept the day before in a double header. If they're playing the same team again the next day, so Cleveland gets Ooh. swept uh, by Kansas City, which is just amazing at, at home. And then we got the Red Sox getting swept, albeit one's a completion of a you know suspended game, but still they, they lost two games yesterday to Toronto. So Red Sox and Guardians should be the plays tonight. So far, 
Red Sox are leading one nothing at least last check. Oh, three to one. We upgraded that, and then um, Cleveland is uh, where are the guards? Guards are um, where are they? I don't see them. They were losing what? before. You see the Guardians Tonight? game on Fanduel? Yeah. What they lose already? Against Kansas right City now. It is yeah. It was a no. Hold on. They're down two one. It's in a rain delay. It's in a rain. Ah, delay. that's why. Because Fanduel doesn't have it on yeah. there. Okay, so. All right. Well, so one of the worst things there. when you're when you're in the risk room or you're in a sports book and you're offering in-game wagering, and there's a rain delay, you have to take it down because it's nice. Like people naturally go, well, they're not playing. Put the line back up, and I'll bet it again. But you don't yeah. know when it starts, so you have to wait and just take it off. And then when they take the field. You can turn it back on quick, and then we jump right back See in the game. pitching. Well, you don't know who's coming back out pitching. You know, right. yesterday, Minnesota was down 9-1 to Atlanta. Everybody that had Minnesota Twins tickets were hoping the game was rained out. You know, they're doing it again tonight. Minnesota and Atlanta, we'll talk about that. Um, seems like a pretty easy under. Oh, wow. The Braves are 7-0 and to the under. And Schellenbach's last seven starts versus winning teams, that qualifies. Yes. But the Twins are seven games over to the or seven games to the over this season. I don't know. I dress like Dale Murphy. Uh, I don't. I, I like the Braves. You? Hard not to right. Um, although yeah. this Simeon Woods Richardson pitcher for the Twinkies is pretty good. He's, he's done a halfway decent job. Yeah, he really uh, you know coming out of nowhere. So. But the Braves, you know, we, we talked a little about it, right? They gave us another eight today. I don't know what it is. The Braves, Dave, and listen, everyone's got little different numbers. But, you know, the site that I use, TeamRankings.com, which I find to be pretty mm -hmm. uh, solid, 77 unders, 49 overs, five pushes. I mean, that's 59, six, that, that's 28 more unders than overs. The For number Atlanta. one under team. For Atlanta. I mean, it's up. And, and again, they just, what's great about it is they keep on giving us eights. Like, you know, Seattle, you don't, you don't see an eight in a Seattle game unless it's in game live. But with this yeah. Braves team, they can't get out of their head that these guys, this is not the Atlanta Braves, you know, of, of yesteryear. These guys are all on the disabled list. You got a handful of guys that are in that lineup. You know, it, it could be the worst pitcher in the world, and it's going to be 3 1 Atlanta. Now, of course, I bet the under last night and went way over, and probably will again tonight because <laughs> I bet the under. But, you know. Here. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, did, I did some work today. Uh, my friends over at MLB Network. Uh, they do some great work, and we talk back and forth a little bit. The Braves have won 10 of 14 on the strength okay. of terrific starting pitching. Their starters have allowed three earned runs or fewer in each of their last 15 games, Scott. Wow. So they're not giving up runs, the starters. And then, I mean, Spencer Schwellenbach, since the start of July, Braves rookies 4-2 and two with a 2.84 ERA and eight starts. So he's been really good. All right. The game flew over last night because of the Braves. We hit him with an in game um, yesterday, 16 and a half when it was 9 1, and they came out of the they came out of the uh rain out, rain delay, and the game fell 16. <laughs> so we got we fell on the right side of the hook. <laughs> that worked out good. But Woods Richardson did some work with him too. He's allowed three runs or fewer in 19 of his 22 starts this season. The Twins have won 15 of his 22 starts. So yeah. you got a, a reason to take the Twins. You got a lot of reasons to take the under. So that's that's where I'm at. How about Azuna props, though? If you guys are interested in Marcel Azuna, two RBI Monday gave him 96 on the season, moved him past Shohei Otani on the National League leaderboard. Ozuna. Leads the NL in average, 307. Four homers shy of Otani for the lead in all three NL triple crown categories. Could he actually – he can't win the MVP, can he? He can't. No way. Zero chance. It's amazing. It's amazing. He is by far the best player this year that gets no publicity, right? You hear about Judge, None. and obviously that's American League. 
You hear about Otani, you know, and for the longest time, FanDuel only had Will Otani win the uh, Triple Crown. And, right. and when I looked it up one time, you know, a few weeks back, to just to see how far ahead he was, I was like, why aren't they giving us Ozuna? <laughs> it's him it's him and uh, Otani separated by one or two for all three categories. So, um, he, he sh- listen, Dodgers are getting in. We know that. Braves are on the border. So, maybe, just maybe, you know, especially with, you know, Dodgers got Betts back and Freeman. We all know they're loaded, whereas the Braves are kind of wounded if he carries his club to the postseason, it's not the worst ticket in the world to be holding on to an Azuna MVP. Uh, maybe. Nope. No, I mean, I don't know. It, 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 Lindor's making a charge. You know, we'll have we'll have we'll, we'll have Mets propaganda talk coming up. Uh, you know, we got I, <laughs> MC's MC's keeping me alert about a rain delay. I, I can't believe this, all right? MC just texted me and said there's a rain delay in Chicago, Texas and Chicago, after four pitches. They <laughs> they started the game for four, four pitches. pitches, and they have a rain delay. Have you ever heard of that? The only thing I can think of is before the game starts, the home team dictates whether they play. Once the game starts, the umpires take over. And I'm betting the umpires didn't want to start the game. The White Sox said, oh, yeah, we're starting this game. And then the umpires said, all right, we started it. Now we're going to go take a seat. See you later. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton, who's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on two. He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins. Welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan talk a little baseball as we got the little SGP on our docket. Same game parlay time. Ah, we're going to head out to the West Coast. Had some success with these SGPs. Not quite like the Black Cloud that's on a monster run, but uh, you don't need to when you're getting five, six, seven, eight to one. 
So we hit a few of these last week. Let's see if we can kind of continue the trend this week. Going to go out to Arizona uh, for the Metsies and Diamondbacks. Uh, we're going to grab the Mets. We got four legs. We're going to take the Mets plus 104 at Arizona. Why? Because the Diamondbacks are playing great baseball. It's got 20, what is it, 28 and 8 since the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. But one team they don't beat, uh, Dave, it's the Mets. Uh, Mets are 17 and six their last 23 games against Arizona, including seven and two in Arizona, where there's going to be Ooh. at least as many fans, if not more Met fans there than Arizona fans, because, you know, Miami and Arizona, Phoenix in particular, two transplant spots for uh, New Yorkers. So they get a good crowd there. They always play well there. So let's go Mets plus 104. We're going to use uh, Francisco Lendor to get an RBI. He's been red hot this month. He's batting 333 this month. Uh, he's uh, has a hit in all but two games, and he's got nine games uh, with RBIs in the month of August. So let's use the RBI uh, for uh, Lindor. Then we're going to have a little fun. We, we, gotta, we stretch oh, the, our, our market here a little bit. What are we doing? Um, but he did, he, it's going to make sense, though. All right. We're going to have the bottom or the top of the third and bottom of the third both. First pitch be a strike. Minus 160, minus 135 odds. And you may say, why, Scott? Why? Well, think about it. Why? Who That's generally bats? Yeah, who generally bats bottom and top of the third? Your leadoff hitter? No. Second hitter? No. Third? No. Fourth? No, right? Those guys are batting in the first inning and the second inning. You're getting, mm -hmm. at best, your seventh place hitter. You got to figure a couple of guys get on base. It's probably going to be your number eight or nine hitter which means the pitchers should be telling themselves, I'm not going to screw around with the number eight or nine hitter. Let's just get this guy out. He sucks. He's hitting a buck 50. No sense to pitch around him. Let's throw some strikes. Boom. There you go. Pace to 12, uh, 1240. Uh, what do you think? I, I, I'm putting my listening glasses on for this one because I was listening. I don't know where you came up with this. We've done the show together now for a long time. I, I can't, I don't know what you're even talking about. But this is, listen, <laughs> you're on the Mets and you're on Lindor. Those are good. These other things, let me just go like this and go, okay, that sounds good. Now, what if they score a bunch of runs in the first inning or second inning or whatever, and, and then we do get to two, three, four in the third? This is out the window. Well, then, then I'm thinking if they score a bunch of runs, the pitcher's pitch count is going to be a little bit higher, and he's not going to be able to screw around anymore. Now he's going to have to go right after the hitter because he's already got 50 pitches in two innings. Mm. Make, okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Go ahead. Either this, way, I mean, it's late. Like, this you is, know what? It's yeah. like it's like throwing – it's like a pass play in the NFL, right? When, when the, old, the old head coaches would say only three things can happen, you know, and two are bad. Well, I mean, you can get a you can get a called strike. You can get a mm -hmm. swinging strike. You can get a mm -hmm. foul ball. You might be able the to get the, you know who yeah. knows what else, right? So, you got three opportunities you get pitch, to get a strike. A pitch clock violation strike. You could even get that. Ooh, how, about how about that? that right? Huh? Huh? About, yeah. Huh? Batter isn't getting a batter's box. Yeah. Right. Taking his time, well, walking from the dugout. Yeah. There you go. Little quick pitch like there. It. Yeah. I got a couple stats for you for this game. Uh, okay. Erod crossed the season high 100 pitches last Tuesday against the Marlins. So uh, maybe he will throw a lot of pitches, and maybe we'll we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Sean Mania, three and one, two point six one ERA over his last five starts. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, would you believe this? This is amazing work by my guys at MLB. Flashback on the morning of May 30th, the Mets were 22 and 33. The D backs were 25 and 30, both under 500 in two of the more disappointing teams in MLB. Since that four game set, the D backs are 48 and 24, best in MLB. Mets, 44 and 28, third best in MLB. This is a playoff series. These two teams might see each other again in October. Yeah. That's for you, Vinny. I'll give you one more. You. Under 11. 11 straight games, Mets under, facing a left-handed pitcher. My boy Zeke Prakasi coming to back.
What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment a little while coming. A place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for... Adam Paxton, he's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Michael night. It's been the one that changed the final. Because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on good. He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. He what a moment that leg. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence with time Game. and Shots delivers Panama. Adam Paxton and the on debut series. the boy Jesus. the fanboy comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins Welcome back. It is in game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sheriff, Pan. Looking at all the action. We'll put it aside here for a sec. We'll get back to it in a little bit. Let's talk some NFL with our good buddy, a uh, friend of mine over at the Sirius XM NFL radio anchor and host, uh, Mr. Zig Fricasi. What's going on, Zig? Long time no see. We converse back and forth on Twitter. Uh, but how you doing, my friend? Dude, it's always great to be with you, Scotty. Dave, to be good with you. We got the retro baseball thing going on. You got your retro Braves. I have the Colt 45s before Whoa. they would become the Houston Astros. Mm. How about that? I like nice. that a lot. Yeah. Um, any reason why you wore that tonight, Zig? First of all, it's great to meet you. Your voice Pleasure is to meet like you. butter in my ears. It's, it's, <laughs> I, it's so smooth and silky. This is great. You like Houston tonight, the baseball? Is that why or you just picked that today? There was no reason behind it. I think it was just one of those it was in the rotation and it was clean yeah. so I picked it up. So perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. You're uh, we're looking at the uh, NFC North a little bit here, Zig. Uh are you drinking the Caleb Williams Chicago Bears Kool-Aid? Kind of hard not to, Scotty. I mean, you look at the fact that, you know, they looked so good in preseason and I know it is what it is, but the the talent level, the Bears have not had a quarterback of this caliber I think since well, ever because some of the throws that he can make out, you know, <laughs> on the run, uh, it's absolutely incredible. They were already a pretty good offense. Uh, now they've enhanced that. I, I like what they've done to the line. The defense was already pretty good. I'm not going to say they're going to win the Super Bowl this year, but I think, you know, if Caleb continues to come along like he has throughout at least his collegiate career, uh, the Bears could, I think, be in the mix in the NFC North. Zig, you're probably old enough to remember Jim McMahon and before him, Vince Evans. There's a couple of good Bears quarterbacks with good arms, okay? But we're swinging over to the Minnesota Vikings because I'm out in Vegas. The buzz out here is that they are going to finish pretty much consensus last in the division, despite the fact that, you know, Sam Darnold could actually be okay and has the tools, but – what do you think about the Vikings? Are they done? Are they toast? No, McCarthy backing them up. Season win totals low. This looks like the hard division. Any hope for the Vikings? Yeah, Dave, I, I would probably lean towards, you know, the under, if you will, simply because, you know, let's face it, Sam Darnold, it's, this has got to be his last time to prove that he could actually be a quarterback in the NFL. 
They, they re-up with Jefferson. I thought that that was a very good move. You know, offensively, they're okay. Defense is where I have a little bit of an issue, a lot of transition on that side of the ball, especially in the secondary. Uh, you know, the, the poor kid, the, the draft pick, was killed in an auto accident over the summer. Oh. Another of their defensive backs blew out his ACL. I mean, it got so bad, you have to bring in his – he's still good, but you got to bring in Stephon Gilmore this late in the season. That's where I think they're going to have some issues defensively. I don't know if the front seven's enough to offset what I perceive to be a big-time weakness in the secondary. I would probably lean towards seven or thereabout in terms of Viking wins. How about Green Bay? Um, you know, what we saw the first half of the season wasn't very good last year. Second half with Jordan Love was, obviously. And, uh, and Dave and I will get into this a little bit more later on, but – uh, the FanDuel, anyway, total passing yards for Jordan Love. And, and they've done this with all quarterbacks, so it's not just him. But it is about 250 or so yards less, Zig, than what he threw last year. Last year he threw for 41.59. They're giving us 38.25. Um, I'm not worried about him getting injured. So forget no. over under as far as win totals. Are, are you buying into Love? And if so, how, how can he go over 38.25 this year? Well, I, I think what you're looking at, Scotty, is the fact that they've, you know, got uh, a quartet of really good receivers, and especially if a guy like Christian Watson uh, is actually healthy this year. And, uh, you know, this guy that kind of got underreported over the summer, but he went to the uh, University of Wisconsin clinic to have his uh, hamstrings looked at, and apparently one hamstring was carrying more mass, if you will, than the other one, which maybe is why he was having issues with the hamstring. So if he was able to get that rectified, if he's able to stay healthy, he was a house on fire the second half of last year. I love Dobbs. I love uh, the uh, Jaden Reed, the Michigan State kid, uh, and then Dontavian Wicks. He has got four really good pass catchers to work with. They got that young tight end I like quite a bit. The ground game, Josh Jacobs, I thought was a sneaky good ad, a uh, free agent from Vegas. Now, they had to part with uh, uh, the kid who went to Minnesota, Aaron Jones. But uh, Green Bay, to me, is an ascending product. I think Jordan Love gets four grand rather easily. What about the Lions, Zig? Everybody's got them pretty much second <laughs> yeah. or third choice in the NFC. They were in the NFC championship last year, and I was really hoping that they were going to be the NFC representative coming here to Vegas. It would have been an unbelievable Super Bowl with Detroit fans here. Yeah. Golf, is this the time they finally get there? Are they going to win like 12 or 13 games? How do you feel about the Detroit Lions, sir? I like I like him quite a bit. I love Dan Campbell. You know, he's bitten enough kneecaps apparently over the last couple of years, but those guys <laughs> have bought in on what they're trying to do. And you locked in some of your key guys, obviously, with Goff, Amon Ra. Uh, you locked in the tackle for a long term. So they obviously have done a great job of drafting. I think, you know, last year maybe you could have used the scenario, well, they snuck up on people the prior year. Well, you can't. You don't use that this year. I think there's an expectation. I think there's some key games on their schedule, so maybe some uh, playoff revenge type matchups. You open up with the Rams, which I think is a very formidable opener. Guys, I'm jacked up to see because this has been, what, 66 years now that the Lions have gone without an NFL championship. The time is now. The expectation's real. At the least, I expect them to win the NFC North. Here's another one, uh, Zig. Uh, last year, Jared got 4,575 yards. FanDuel's given us 4,025, a 550-yard drop from last season. I mm. mean, are these just not automatic overs? No. You know, that's a, that's a good question, Scotty. I think maybe, you know, you would like to see them implement the ground game a little more. I know Jameer Gibbs was banged up in the preseason Hopefully, he's going to be ready to go for the regular season. So maybe that's where some of the odds makers are thinking, you know what, if this backfield steps up, maybe uh, Goff sacrifices a few passing yards in terms of that. So maybe it is a little bit more towards the underside on that. But, man, I, I wouldn't doubt him. He's been paid. I think now he wants to prove 
He got the Rams to a Super Bowl, at least helped them get there. I think he wants to do the same now with the Detroit Lions. I can tell you from an odds-making standpoint, you adjust it down off of that number, especially when it's a high number, one, because of injury, and two, because it's likely with the Lions' season win total, they're going to be playing ahead more than they're yes. going to be playing behind and running the ball in the fourth quarter, and you have to adjust that number down. Zig, last one for me, sir. A surprise team in the NFC that people may or may not be talking about to challenge one for a playoff spot or two challenge maybe to top for an NFC championship spot. And please don't say the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I won't say the Atlanta Falcons, <laughs> even, even though they've made a really good couple of additions on that defense with Judon and Simmons. Of course, Dave, where you're at in Vegas, it's about, since I used to live there about 16 years, it was about a 45 minute flight to Phoenix which is where the Cardinals are. Ooh. Keep, keep, keep your eye on them because oh. it looks as because it looks as though it looks as though Kyler Murray's finally got the mature thing going. They've upgraded the personnel. He loves playing for Gannon. They played pretty well about the last five or six games last year. Sneaky good possible for wild card with the Arizona Cardinals. Zig, I get asked all the time, what do I miss most about not walking into the uh, three-letter network studios? And I always say, Zig Fricasse's gals, homemade cookies and brownies. Yes. Oh, I miss Love those, you, Zig. <laughs> Thank, Thank Zig. you, guys. Appreciate it. We'll do it again soon. Thank you. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingsham to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingsham, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are he was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on he doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that bags. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. 14. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and Short delivers cinema. Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, Jesus the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. Welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherpin. Thanks again to Zig Fricasi. Again, check him out. Sirius XM NFL Radio does a great job hosting and uh, anchoring. So uh, we opened up a little uh, Pandora's box here, Dave, with, with football. So uh, l let me throw these at you. I remember I brought this up last year. And as it turned out, basically all you're doing is betting on will the guy be healthy. And that is mm -hmm. quarterback numbers. Um, to a T, I looked at, uh, not to a tag, but to a T, one, two, three, four. I, I took about the top 15 quarterbacks. 
wrote down how many yards they passed for last year and then what the offshore books were giving us as a number and then FanDuel, what they were giving uh-huh. us as a number. And uh-huh. I, I tell you, to a, to a T, Dave, it's about two, three, four, and in some cases, as, as we saw with uh, Jared Goff, over 500 yards less. Mm-hmm. So what I noticed last year is, is something you exactly said, dead on. Um, that is, the guys that stayed healthy last year went over their numbers. The guys that got hurt and missed games went under the numbers. So you're not really betting on will they hit their number. You're betting on who's going to stay healthy. So you see some of the numbers there. Uh, Derek Carr, that that one stands out to me. Um, He threw for 38, almost 3,900 yards last year. His number this year is 3,325. I mean, that's a 553-yard drop. I, I know it's Derek Carr, but man, he's going to stay healthy, right? I, I mean, Jared Goff, 550 yard drop from last year. Uh, two with tags, 464. Baker Mayfield, 554 yards less. He threw for over 4,000 yards, and they're giving us 3,500. I mean, yeah. is, is that a smart way to bet these? Just try and figure out who's going to be healthy, but who the heck knows, right? I mean, everyone could get hurt, but. There's certain guys you stay away from, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, two with tags even. But yeah, there's, these seem there's like guys, automatic overplays. There's guys that'll make them automatic underplays. Like there's bad guys that'll come in and say, ask you how much you're taking on these. And you say five dimes is the limit. And they'll bring a bag if you have 20, and they'll bet them all under. They'll bet them all under. Now, whether that yeah. wins or not, They'll see, but they'll bet five dimes. They'll spend a hundred thousand at the counter, and some of the ones they'll ask you, "What are you moving it to?" And that's the hard part about these. You have to establish that number, but you know you could sit ten odds makers in a room and go, "Well, somebody wants to bet you limit Brock Purdy under thirty eight fifty. What are you going to move it to?" Somebody will look over and say, "I don't know, thirty seven fifty. Someone will say thirty seven hundred. Someone will say. 3725. You get almost 10 different answers. So the volatility in these things are really, really difficult to measure. One. So as the book, you shade it to the under. That's why they're all lower. When you went through your research, did you find any that were higher? There's two. One wow. was Pat one was Patrick Mahomes. But even his, I love the over. Uh, he threw for 41.83 last year. They're giving us uh, 42.25. And oddly enough, the offshore, offshore and FanDuel is about literally 25 to 50 yards different. There's, there's not much difference. But Minimum. with Mahomes, right. it is. But Mahomes is the one where they offer FanDuel is 4.25 or 42.25. Uh, offshore is 43.50, 125 wow. yards more. Yeah, that, that was the biggest difference. And the other one that was more was, um, ah, a little surprising, C.J. Stroud. He threw for 4108 last year, and they're now making it 4175. Stephon okay, Diggs so added to the team. Correct. Exactly. I was just right. going to say, improved the wide receivers and brought him in. This team is supposed to be as good or better than last yep. season. So you keep it the same and also a very public team, not nearly as much as Mahomes. If you'd have given me one guess on who was higher, my first and only guess would have been Mahomes because yeah. everything's coming up, Chiefs. And you just doesn't well, matter what you make the number. They're going to bet you over. So that would have been the one I would have guessed. Um, I don't know if there's another guy even in the AFC, not even Josh Allen, not Lamar, not Joe Burrow, too many question marks. Um, definitely no one else in the AFC South. There's not another guy that I would think, oh yeah, that one will be an adjustment up. There's not, there's not anyone. Yeah. Let me give you Mahomes, right? And, and I know this is classic public guy, you know, public as public can be, right? Uh, with Patrick yep. Mahomes. But that said, rookie year, he only plays one game. So throw that out. First year really playing 5,097 yards. Second yeah. year, 4,031, but only 14 games. Missed a bunch of games. 
Right. Next year, 4,740. Next year, 4,839. Next year, 5,250. Now, last year, 4,183. But how is Patrick Mahomes not thrown for 4,226 yards? I mean. How many games? How many games did he play last year? Does he have 17 games played? 16. They must have sat him okay. in the last game. Uh, yeah, yeah, sat him last game because he I think they did. So figure yeah. the same I thing this did. year. Yeah. Okay. So wide receiver core is worse than it's ever been, right? Like, yeah. you know, so that, that's, that's a lot of question marks. With that, Kelsey's another year older. Um, they may actually have, I don't want to say the best running game that they've had since he's been there, but they have a semblance now of a running game to try to keep him upright and not have to make all those plays that he did. I don't know if it's just an automatic over, you know, this might, this might not be. And listen, if they're ahead late, they're going to run the ball, run the clock. You know, they have a good enough defense. And I mean, they, they gave you the roadmap to the Super Bowl last year, play it close to the vest, a lot of low scoring games, not a lot of overs. I don't think their big play capability is even there either. That's 264 yards a game if he plays 16 games. Patrick Mahomes not going to throw for 264? What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Which you can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Where's Lee Plazier with Beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are they? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on cue. He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that five. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. 40. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and Jones, delivers Panama. Adam Paxton and the on debut. The boy, Jesus, the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. All right, welcome back in Game Live. Prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel and Dave share pen closing out hour number one. Full hour to go, so don't uh, go anywhere. Uh, we had our SGP same game parlay. How about our second favorite little segment here, the Black Cloud play of the day? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, we were on fire with these last week. Hit all five. Uh, oh, I forget my. what we did on Sunday, but yeah, we we uh, we, we hit all these uh, suckers. So let's uh, keep it rolling here, shall we? Uh, we're gonna go out to Los Angeles or uh, check that. We're gonna go out to Seattle and uh, mm -hmm. take the uh, Tampa Bay Seattle Mariners game, and we're gonna go over six and a half runs. Oh, yeah, my. it's it, listen. Oh, boy. Uh, mm. I know it's tough going over on Seattle, Dave. Mm. I get that. But I will tell you, Seattle, eight of their last ten games have had seven runs or more. Eight and two, including two and one with the new manager. So maybe, you know, a little different philosophy. And, and the one that didn't with the new manager, they scored five runs. Um, the, the one team they replaced, I forget what it was, always scored one. Otherwise, that would have gone over two. So eight and two, putting a bat on the ball a little bit. They're striking out a little bit less. Uh Give me over six and four runs. You know, four threes is you know that that's easy to do. So give me uh give, give me over six and a half. Uh, the kid pitching for Tampa Bay, three of his five games have had seven runs or more as well. Little little, little bonus there. Okay, um, we had under last night. We had under seven, and it fell six. We bet it under six and a half right after the game started too. So we held on and got there in this game, but. Uh, I got this one for you. Seattle has scored four plus runs in each of their last three wins since Wilson took over as the manager. Seattle is 54 and 11 when scoring at least four runs this season. That's the second wow. best win percentage in Major League Baseball behind the Padres, 62 and 11. Meanwhile, the Rays are 49 and 12 in such games. So they don't they don't score the runs and. We got this one. The Rays have dropped four to the last five games and are now seven games out of the wild card spot. They've been held to six combined runs in their last four losses. You better hope the Rays get two or three. I think you got to get two or three from the Rays to get this one over. This one's screaming 4 1 to me, but I don't want to put the black cloud on anything. I'm rooting for you. I haven't bet it yet myself. But I like the under before all this. All right. They're coming off a series in Oakland. You know, it's a bad hitter's ballpark. Mm. So the numbers are skewed mm. a little bit. Not to see how it's a great hitter's ballpark. But mm. Mm. Uh, Jeffrey Springs pitching one and two for the Devil Dogs. Who's <laughs> that, right? So, mm. yeah. See, anytime it's six and a half, it's hard. You know, hard not to go yeah. over. Wish it was six, well, but I'll, I'll take the right. six and a half. Books daring you to take the uh, take the under, and yeah. again I did it last night. Half the books had six and a half, the other ones had seven. Uh, I mean, Ranieri said go under seven if you can. It stayed under. Book wants you to bet over, and you went right to it with the black cloud. That's fine. Julio Rodriguez, how about this? Just one for twenty three, with two RBIs mm. in his last six games. I mean, their big guy's not hitting. You got everything working against you, Wetzel, but you've got there before. Keep the streak alive. Winners bet on streaks. Losers bet against streaks. Right there. there you go. There you go. Uh, Red Sox, 6-2 over Toronto. Oh, I do love that system. I, I, I don't have the numbers to tell you, but just following this stuff. You know, Dave, you follow something, you just recognize it. When a team loses a doubleheader and they face that same team the next game, I don't know. I don't know if it's a psychological thing. I don't know if the team that won the doubleheader is, is uh, extra giddy, thinking, okay, we did it. You know, the other team is all upset. I don't know. But I'm telling you, the team that loses the doubleheader wins way more the next time out. So 6-2, Boston over Toronto in the uh, bottom of the sixth inning. Not saying it's over, but good little start there. And then uh, I guess the Cleveland game is still in a rain delay with, uh, with Kansas City. So we need rain um, in Pittsburgh. It's nine three. They're trailing. The Yankees uh, are down. The, the Stankies. I'm sorry. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays with yes. you and Fridays um, for the people. <laughs> we got to call them the Stankies. Bottom of the eighth. They're down four one. You want them plus two and a half? No. Not you know, I thought I thought Washington was live dogs in this series. Uh, I had, did have them last night. Played them again today. Uh, oh. They're ten and oh. twelve. Yeah, they're ten and uh, yeah, ten and twelve. Their last twenty-two games, playing you know oh. halfway decent baseball. Uh, Yanks uh, coming off a uh, big emotional series, uh, you know, old timers day and everything else this past weekend uh, against Colorado. 
Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that. Tempting, but stay away. Hour number two coming up next. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming. A place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Michael night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on he doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that five. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and John delivers Adam, Adam Paxton and the on debut. The boy, Jesus the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. It's in game live, prime time here on the grid. Hour number two, Scott Wetzel, Dave Shearer, pan until uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time as we talk a little baseball. A little baseball. We got the WNBA as well, but uh, we got uh, uh, Cam Stewart joining us at bottom of the hour. We'll do some NFL and some baseball stuff with him, Dave. So, got a number of games going on. A few of the starts. Uh, we got the Stanks, as we mentioned, uh, to close out last hour, down 4 1 against the, the Nationals. I do, like I said, I thought they were going to win. Your uh, your Pirates with uh, Skeens pitching tomorrow afternoon. Kind of a weird uh, start time for that uh, tomorrow, but they're down 9-3 against the Cubbies uh, tonight. A lot of blowouts. Uh, the big, you know, one of the big anyway series. Uh, Philadelphia 5-zip over the Astros as they try and take 2-3 of three from uh, from Houston. Anything uh, on the board uh, currently going on that uh, strikes your fancy? Uh, I, I really like the Phillies again today. I, I mean, yesterday Wheeler was pitching and they were minus 180. Uh, minus 185, and then tonight with Nola, uh, I was I thought it was really cheap. Uh, you know, close around minus 140. So on the Phillies, Pirates are just go against unless Skeens is pitching. Uh, just it's it's officially football season in Pittsburgh. I, I already have accepted that. Um, Braves, obviously, I'm wearing the Braves uni from the past. Um, any brave you can think of, again, tweet at us. Uh, opposite picks for Scott, Sports BK, and Sig for me, Sports Grid TV for the grid. Uh, I like them, Braves. I'm on the Padres. Things are working. Things th this th things are looking pretty good. Um, we got rain delays. They started that game. They haven't started Angels, Tigers, rain delay, and Royals, Guardians. Rain delay and White Sox after four pitches, thanks to our correspondent MC. Um, I don't know the, the, the best games today or tonight. We, you know, yeah, we got th right through. I mean, this is West Coast baseball tonight. Metsies, I like when you say that. That sounds like like an insider type thing. That's that that's good. Metsies <laughs> and Diamondbacks. I like that a lot. Um, 
this is dead pick him game to me. Fought pitching. That's a pitching change from overnight last night. Manaya pitching. I like Mets. I do, but you got to stop the train that is the Arizona Diamondbacks if you do that. 26 and 8 uh, oh. since the All Star break are the Diamondbacks. 26 yeah. and 8. You know, the last time I checked was just the other day. I'll check here as we speak, but 18 to 1 still to win the World Series. Yes, sir. Um, by the way, what we need to figure out would our uh, three-team, three-leg uh, round-robin parlay that we hit on, oh, by the way, uh, with the baskets, hockey, and, and college basketball. Yes. When do we want to do that? Do we want to – because if we include college football, now's the time, you know, the big college football season really really starts, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, or, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, uh, some Thursday games. But it's this weekend. So do we want to wait a week or two with college? Do we want to do it before the college season starts? Do we want to not include college? Let's let's no, let's set a reminder. Okay. Friday we'll do night. it. Well, no, we'll do it the first week of October, right before the baseball playoffs start. We'll know the path of the baseball. Okay. We'll pick the baseball. We'll pick the college football. And that's going to be really tough to pick the Super Bowl, but we'll we'll try to get you know we we got those home. I think you said that paid like a hundred and eighty something to one, the one that we hit. So that that was good. Yeah. Um. So you're kind of playing with house money there a little bit, but yeah, let's do it. Let's wait. We'll let the college football season play out a little bit. First few weeks, we'll have a better feel for conferences and alignment. How many teams are going to get in, and then we'll know the path for the baseball. I think. Knowing the path for the baseball is so important because two of the NLS teams are going to have to play each other in the first round. And that will help determine, are we going to go with San Diego? Are we going to go with Arizona if we use either one of them? Are they going to either one of them going to catch the Dodgers who tonight play the Orioles and what some are talking about being a world series preview Wetzel. Mm. Oh, look at this. Even the producers got involved with this. Under nine tonight in Baltimore and the Dodgers. What's so hot of producers? They're not as hot as the Black Cloud play tonight. They are not. Well, who is? Right. I mean, who is? Uh, Of course, Fandle's got it at eight and a half, but who's counting? Um, Flaherty and Irvin. Irvin. Yeah, Irvin. 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 Cole Irvin. Yeah. Uh, what the? Huh? I can't go under at a Dodgers game. Oh, can't, man. I just can't. Yeah, can't do it. You know, um, especially at home where they seem to play so much better. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm having my doubts about this Orioles team. I'm really, I'm kind of concerned. Oh, Dodgers, boy. by the way, I will say this. I do like the Orioles plus 160 tonight, right? I mean, minus 190. Forget the pitchers. I, you know, I like to throw the pitchers out of the equation. You want to give me the Orioles plus one sixty? I'll, I'll take that, even against the Dodgers, who are playing much this? better. But Dodgers have won twelve of their last sixteen games. Team has hit twenty seven home runs and is averaging five point three runs per game over this recent surge. Uh, I don't know if one sixty is enough. What's all? I, I don't know. Six. They hit. Six and they one. Hit Shohei. Last seven, too. Yeah, they hit him on yeah. the wrist, and he's he's, he's going to be okay. And then I got this little nugget on uh, on Cole Irvin with a V. Six v. and four, four point oh seven ERA, and fifteen filling starts for the Orioles. I don't know. I can't do it. Uh, you can have him. I, I, that's not for me. It's Dodgers again. Flaherty yeah. again. That's it. I'll take Flaherty. Um, here's the issue. We bring up uh, the the playoff in this scenario, right? What do the Houston Astros do and the Dodgers really? But the Dodgers, I don't think would would mind too much. But if the Astros and Dodgers have to play the opening goofy best of three, mm-hmm. do you pitch Justin Verlander? who gave up four runs on seven hits in five innings tonight. He's got an ERA now over four. He's basically been mediocre. 
if he continues to pitch that way, like you, you don't have the luxury like in a best of seven or even a best of five. You, you can't throw a guy out there based on reputation and lose a game at a best of three. You're screwed. So do the Dodgers sit Ver, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kershaw? Uh, and uh, do the Astros sit Verlander? Wow. That's tough to do um, for those guys. I think it'll depend on who the number two is going to be. Because I, I I think Verlander might be the three in that situation. Kershaw may have to be the two. I don't know, right? If Glasnow's going to go game one, right? Who? Bueller. Gavin you trust Stone. Bueller? Stone. Gavin Stone. Oof. Bueller. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was for you guys that you know remember Ferris Bueller's yeah. day off it might be a little bit yeah. older for some of you but um I don't know I, I I think if I had to pick which one would get the start I would think it would be Kershaw but it might be both I don't know dead arm I mean, you is a go thing Valdez. at the end of the season right right you got to go Fran yeah. Valdez of course right, for Hughes. he's got a yeah. pitch so yeah. Blanco been pretty good, very good. Then Hunter Brown, yeah. You know, Hunter Brown's been okay. The three game one, series one. is so hard. That's so hard. Yeah. I don't know. They got to get rid of that. It's not fair. You win your division and you got to play a best of three. That that's just not right. You know that that and listen with the Orioles, like the Dodgers. I don't think they're going to have to worry about that record wise. But the the Astros. With with Cleveland, if they you know win, or with the Centrals playing good ball, and in the Stanks or Orioles, that they could finish with the third best record and have to play one of those Correct. best of threes. Correct. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we'll update the baseball scores when we come back in game live prime time on the grid. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away from a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are they? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Michael night as being Walton. the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the big leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins.
All right, welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid checking out some uh, baseball uh, a little NFL preview as well since we got a lot of blowouts in the baseball nothing has changed since we last left you so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that though but uh I just kind of previewing all the divisions here, Dave. We're looking at the NFC North. Talked a little bit with uh, Zig Bracassi, NFL Radio, last hour about that. So uh, I'll ask you what I asked him as far as the Chicago Bears are concerned. Eight and a half is their team total. You know, it's you know, nine and eight. Nothing, nothing crazy, crazy. But people are buying into them, thinking that the, maybe, just maybe, they're going to make the playoffs. And who knows what they could do. And Caleb Williams. Are you drinking the, uh, the Caleb Williams Chicago Bears Kool-Aid? Me? I am not. I no, no. I've seen it too many times. Um, and this is one of those ones that, like, people will bet narratives. People will bet rookie quarterbacks, and it is really, really hard to win in the NFL. It is really, really hard as a rookie to have early success. Now, can it get better? Yes. Does it start usually like that and then go up? No, it usually starts down here and then you go up and then you go back and then you go up a little and then you, you know, maybe figure it out by past halfway or something. No, I'm not buying it. But again, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, one of the last years I was working in the risk room, I watched people bet the Cleveland Browns to win the Super Bowl every single day for like 278 days in a row when Baker Mayfield went there and I just watched right. the bets come in and bets come in. And I was like, when is the last time I'll ask you, when's the last time the Cleveland Browns won the Super Bowl? You remember? Yeah. Never, never. There never you go. Been there. That's that. See, that's what we say. We'd be in the risk room going, all right, what, what are we missing here? Are we missing anything? No, I don't think so. Just keep taking the bets. Lower the odds, lower the odds. Still at eight and a half for the season wins, right? For the Bears. Yep. You got a lot of interesting pockets of their schedule. You know, there's a th is there a three game roadie there, right? They have a three game road trip. Uh, one, two, no, one, two, three. Yeah, there's there's three at yeah. at Detroit, at San Francisco, at Minnesota. Those are recipes for disaster. Then they come back with the Lions, the the Seahawks, and the Packers. That's a rough back end of the schedule. They better have six or seven locked up before that and only need one or two more to get to eight or nine, but I'm not buying it. Are you you're buying it? You you're in this? You 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 would zig? Well, I I, th I think so. Here, here's why. And I try not to let schedules dictate too much of, of what I think about a club. But their schedule, uh, you know, Rose versus home, yeah, it's difficult. Now, not only do they have a three-game schedule, they also have a pair of back-to-backs, uh, which so that's five or three sets of back-to-backs plus the three-game on top of it, which is very difficult, right? But, boy, look at that opening schedule. Um, Tennessee mm. at home, certainly winnable, right? You're not going to probably beat Houston. You got the Colts on the road, that's winnable. The Rams at home, Carolina Jacksonville overseas, Washington, Arizona, New England. You know, stop me when I get to a real football team. I mean, that is a pretty easy schedule. You know, then, as you said, it picks up, but you still got, you know, Minnesota on there, and I don't know what you're going to get out of Sam Darnold. I don't think they're going to be any good. You got, and you got Minnesota twice on there. So I, do you see nine losses? You know, because they would have to go eight and nine, right? I always kind of say, what, what would – have to happen for me to lose this over eight and a half well lose nine times I don't know if I see nine losses you know he's not taking over a one win team and I get not everybody is CJ Stroud we, we all got spoiled and you're right 100% right as always you know it is very difficult to come in he was the anomaly but he's taking over a team that was you know playing much much better last year I I could see nine and eight I think I am gonna buy the Kool-Aid what do they go in a division this is what, what the, me and Matt do this on Bostonian versus the book. What do they go in the right. division? Three and three? Three and three. Is that realistic? Yeah. yeah. If they go if they go four and two or better, you're likelier to go over. They have to go four and two or better, in my opinion, for them to go over. Three and three. I think we can find five more wins on the schedule. I don't know if we can find six with the with the non division games. Right? Tennessee, right. they should win. Small favorites. Opening game. Right. Colts. Pick them. 
at Texans, that would be very surprising if they win. Yeah. Rams at home, they could win, but I would actually think they would lose that game. Carolina, they're supposed to win. So there you go. Then we go at Washington, right? Uh, yep. At, at Arizona. Arizona. Get a split out of those. Out the desert and win it? Okay, get one out of two, get I'll buy. So right. now we're, I think we, if we go three. three and three and we have four wins there, that's seven. Did they win that Jacksonville game? That's a neutral site game, right? Yeah, we'll say no. But they beat New England at home. There That's you go. Four. So now we're sitting at eight if we get there. And we need one more win to go over. Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit, division, division, division. San Francisco Seattle. out of division. Division, division, division with Seattle thrown in there. It could come down to the Seattle game. Right. You'd be able to hedge, though. Because they'll probably be favored oh, at home. If you get to eight, yeah. Yeah, if you get to eight, that right. would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, uh, I think I got them. Yeah. Um, what a bug that's been bugging me. I think, I, yeah. You got them? Uh, you, you buy? I think so. Yeah. Although I don't gotta, see him on my hands. Give back, so, we yeah. got to give that guy a nickname. Hey, man, he's been <laughs> yeah. buzzing around, bothering you, and all this other stuff. You need the chopsticks. Do you remember when Mr. Miyagi caught the fly? Yeah. With the chopsticks? Yep, yep, yep. Got him. This fly's been bugging me more than my wife. Uh, how no. about the Lions? Ooh, zinger. Buying um, into the Lions. Hunter versus the Hunty this year. Yeah, I am. I, I like the Lions a lot. I go back to the days with the Lions. They were my NFC team while I was growing up in Pittsburgh. I always wanted to see the Lions do well. I love that uniform. I love Billy Sims was my first favorite player that wasn't yeah. a Steeler. He was great. I think they win the division. I do. Yeah. I think they go over their season win total. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm buying into Jared Goff. I tell you, I, I know I know you. they want to run the ball a little bit more, but that over 4,000 yards passing, I'm going to go over that as well. There you go. chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well it's been the dream debut so far for him for Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one you can do it. make that double 18 away for a place in the final Wesley Plazier was beaten knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is he was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Michael night as being Walton. the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins.
All right, welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan with some baseball stuff. Uh, back to the uh, baseball board. Bottom of the night. Uh, let's uh, run down the scores here. Like a lot of blowouts. It's, it's tough to bet the blowouts. You just like who, who was the late four and a half runs, right? It's, it's so goofy betting this stuff sometimes. But uh, that's it. Uh, that's that's why we're here. Cubs nine three over the Pirates. Uh, I'd, I'd stay away from that. Uh, Oakland five two over the bottom of the ninth inning two out in fact i think that one's actually over now although it does say uh two outs uh bottom nine with a little flyer on the reds uh red sox still six two over uh toronto bottom of the eighth inning not giving you a number on that atlanta still four nothing uh over the twins they just locked it but still four nothing and uh ooh, look at the ooh. cardinals uh rallying scoring three yeah. times at the bottom of the fifth now lead uh, san diego well. yeah ooh. Bottom of blast. fifth. Yeah, the, the, the first five Padres are winning the whole game. Uh, ain't going to cash oh, that ticket. Right. And one out in the bottom of the fifth, and it flips. And now St. Louis wins the first five. So uh, that was kind of a bummer if you had San Diego. But game's far from over. I, I Let's see what the in-game number is there. Uh, wow, 12 and a half. I don't think they're done scoring. I think you could go over 12 and a half. Wait until you see the catch that Victor Scott made to rob Jackson Merrill of a home run. Um, Ran into the wall, ran a mile in center field and caught it. If you haven't seen it, it was a fantastic catch. But uh, are the Cardinals done, Scott? They're done, right? They're they're not going to catch the Brewers. Eh, They're probably not going to catch them, but I don't think they're done, done. Um, Yeah. They're, uh, yeah, the, the two back to, to, for the uh, uh, division race. But wild card, they're, you know, what are they, four games, five games? Uh, uh, six games. Oh, they're right on the periphery. Right, 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 you know, right. This is the big series, right? They win, you know, against the Padres. Then they can pick up ground um, on everybody, including San Diego, which is sitting in the number two spot. They get swept by the Padres after losing last night. Now, mm-hmm. then now you finish seven, eight back, and then and basically you're done. Right. And then right. you start thinking about August 31st. We can put some guys on waivers, get rid of, you know, Cardinals generally don't wave the white flag too good of a baseball town. There's no football, you know, so it's like, let's stay in this thing as long as we possibly can. But, mm. uh, you know, the writing would basically be on the wall. By the way, you mentioned Jackson Burrow, like walk off home run against the, uh, the Mets on Sunday. See your uh, National League. Has he overtaken uh, your boy Skeens, National League, uh, National League uh, Rookie of the Year? I would think Ask so, right? Him. It's amazing. Has to. Guy plays every day. Has all these yep. walk-offs, big moments. His Padres are going to make the playoffs. The Pirates are not. Um, Skeens is doing some unbelievable things, but he didn't do it until, you know, beginning of May, mid-May, whatever it was when he made his first start. Um, odds moved. People are betting it, talking about it on every show. See it all over social media. Oh, Skeens is going tomorrow against the Cubs. I hope he pitches seven innings, one earned with 11 Ks. I'd love to see him stay in the argument, and I would love to see the ball be put in the court of, you know, the Pirates manager, Shelton, and the rest of the upstairs to let him go for it and keep pitching if he's okay. But I I understand shutting him down too. I mean, you, you don't need to let a horse run a race or get hurt or anything like that in a non-important race. So I get shutting him down. What would you do? Would you let him keep pitching? I'd let him pitch until he got to 150 strikeouts because that's what I got his total. <laughs> that's what I would Gambler. do. Yeah, Gambler. you got him. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, though, that, that aside, yeah, I mean, unless there's some kind of strain and he, you see signs of slowing down, but I don't see that. I mean, you know, he's still pitching well. You got nothing else to play for. I, I mean, here's a guy that we were talking, you know, not only Cy Young, but, you know, you know, who knows, maybe MVP, probably not that, but Cy Young, you know, rookie of the year was was an afterthought. He absolutely is going to get rookie of the year, and he may end up with nothing, like, like because you're going to shut him down in right. September. I don't know. You know, yeah. it's so easy, too, with these with these call-ups. Some of the games that they play, remember we went over their schedule, their home schedule, it's a joke. You know, he might be able to get, like, maybe a no-hitter, eighth inning, something goofy like that, and put himself kind of back on the map. Yeah. 
That's that's one award, Dave. I, no kidding. I I would really because you only get one shot at this, just one shot at glory. That is an award I would really want to win if I was a ball player, rookie of the year. Right. No, very. That was a you know? great argument. That was a great case. I hope you're right. I hope pirate fans are listening. There you go. Yeah. All right, Cam Stewart coming up next with a bunch of winners. Hope. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Which you can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot, and they are playing for a place in the twenty-five thousand pound Champions Week. Ninety-seven. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk 45. about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Being what a moment that five. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, James and John delivers Adam, Adam Paxton and the on debut. The boy, Jesus the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. Welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid trying to track down uh one uh, cam stewart who i understand is a uh, hard band to uh, find uh these days uh oh, what yeah. dave sharepan was was telling us uh yeah <laughs> well he went way up north little inside he joke. went way up little north, inside joke went up to a cabin you know took his dad it was a great trip his, his girlfriend and got you know he little said Aaron the, Rodgers the air was here, huh? clear yeah, he went up there and said, "Man, if he could, he'd stay there." He's done with the city, and it was uh, it was good. You know, he swam in a lake. He did all this stuff. Real mountain man, this Cam Stewart. It was good. Wow. It was good to see him. Yeah, he that? relaxed. He got his head all clear. So you know, hopefully he, we find him or he shows up uh, the next segment with some golf plays because this is it, right? If there's no more, yep. there's no more golf, right? We got to get this done and taken care of and. Beat the, beat the favorite again, I guess. I don't know. He didn't have Keegan Bradley, was saying, but he had a lot of top tens. Um, I'm sure he'll have some Canadian football, stuff like that. Just, just, just... Where are you at you with the college? Like... Have, have, you, have you come up with anything that you're really like looking at for the college? Because you know Penn State's playing West Virginia. And I got people yep. coming at me on the socials and all over and all this stuff. That West Virginia is a live dog. Uh, I'm not saying they're not. One of my dear friends, longtime odds maker, I saw him yesterday at the book. Someone came up to me and asked, Dave, what do you think about the Penn State game? I said, what do you think I think? I want Penn State to win. And uh, my buddy Richie, we call him Stevie the Pencil, said, I made the game five and a half. And I looked at the guy that asked Whoa. me. I said, man, I hate when he does that. 
hate when he made it that low because Richie got a pretty good opinion. So I'm nervous. I mean, I can't believe that the line was that high and it's coming down. And a lot of sharp guys and people that I know are on West Virginia, both side and money line. Let's look at Penn State go and lose the opening game, to West Virginia. No, nah, no. Nah. I don't know if I'd lay eight and a half. Uh, I don't know if I would take five and a half either, to tell you the truth. But right. they're not losing. They're Penn State's in the world. They don't lose to West Virginia. You know, sometimes you have to just take a step back and just start thinking, all right, how many times has Ohio State lost to Indiana and Michigan State and Purdue? And, and how many times has Penn State lost to, you know, Rutgers and all these goofy oh. teams that may have, you know, be halfway decent, right? You can count on one hand. With everything is said and done, you can count on one hand how many times in the Big Ten the big boys lose to the little guys. Not happening. I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope yeah. you're right. I was at Penn State when they lost some of those games. The first year I went, they went five and six. It's the first losing season in 50 years. My freshman year at Penn State, 1988-89. Couldn't believe it. I was like, wait a second. This team, I couldn't stand this team when I was growing up. And now I'm all into it. I'm at first one at the games. As soon as the gates open, standing in the first row right off the field. Do you remember back in the day they used to give you a student ticket? They gave us a student yes. ticket. They punched holes in it to give us. It was one thing. It was a punch ticket like a library card. Six dollars a game it cost us to go to the Penn State games. That was it. Student section. Wow. Now it's like 300 for the season to go to the Penn State games. So Even for students? I myself. Wow. Yeah, 300 uh, for a student ticket for the season. It used to be $36. Six games times six. Six times six is 36. Yeah. Um, there's upsets. That, you know, there's upsets first week. Does Clemson have a chance to beat Georgia? No. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Although, really? you know what I heard? Yeah, you know what uh, one of the podcast guys told us uh, today? Huh. That Dabo, remember, I mean, I don't know if you remember this or not, but Dabo Swinney last year got into a fight with a caller who yeah. basically said, you know, justify, right, uh, justify your salary because you, you haven't yeah. been to the playoffs and this and that, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, for whatever reason, you know, they kept that guy on, I remember for a long time. But this year for the Dabo Swinney show, they're taking no live phone callers because of that. Now, if you want to ask a question for Dabo, you got to write it in, email it, or send it in. How weak is that? And I like Dabo. You know, he's, he does it right. He doesn't go into Transportal. He's been holding off as long as possible with that. So, um, but Dab, hey, listen, cut the guy off. You know, you don't let the guy ramble for five minutes if you don't like it. Um, but to not take phone call, that, that's pretty weak. That's You're pretty, pretty old school. That said, I think... You're you're yeah. pretty old school. You did you did call the radio, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's not for the faint of heart, okay? No, it's I not mean, easy. Yeah. No, it's not. And you don't know, but like you said, you control the call. I mean, you can just zap the, the person calling and say, well, we dropped the call, sorry, and then you move on. But I don't know. I don't blame them for doing it. I understand it. I don't agree with it. I'd rather they take the calls, keep the show going the way it is. People like the access. Wetzel, well, so if we could take calls, can you imagine Vincenzo and Matty G working a switchboard oh, yeah. right now, taking calls for us? I would love yeah. that. Let's that add that right now. Come on in. There was a there was a day they used to here at Sports Grid take calls at, at we and then they had a few you know regular yeah yeah uh, um. They would, how would they do? They wouldn't just put it like uh, just put it over the air, but they wouldn't have any obviously picture of him. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the one guy that used to call in a game all the time? He was a goofball. But Ooh, I think really? Oklahoma, I think uh, I think Georgia loses. I don't. I told you, I don't think Georgia's outright. making the playoffs this year. Outright, they're, they're if they don't lose this one, they're gonna lose three times this season. They're not making the playoffs. Three I'm losses. Telling you right now. Three losses. They have a brutal schedule. Brutal. And I just hope this dopey committee doesn't bend over backwards and cheat and put them, not cheat, but, you know, uh, kiss their butt and put them in. They have road games at Texas, at Alabama, this neutral site game against Clemson, and 
they got Tennessee and a road game at Ole Miss. The three best wow. teams outside of them, right? They have road games, and then they got Tennessee at home, which is you know won't be easy. They got a real last year's schedule was a complete joke. This year they're, they're playing with the big boys, and I just think they've had too much success over the years that they've lost a ton of guys. I know they reload, but I you know. I, I think I'm not a big Carson Beck guy either. Uh, I think they find a way to lose three of those games and not get in. Plus 410 Man. on FanDuel. Yeah. Wow. To not make it. Then he put this one in the file because if if they if this happens, we're telling I'll, everybody. I'll remind you. Oh, put this exactly. put this one in the file. I disagree with you. I don't think they're going to win or lose three. They could lose two, but I, I I'd be very surprised if they lose three. But if they do, we're telling the world. Okay, we'll put the clip out, telling everybody. What about A and M and Notre Dame? Texas A and M and Notre Dame. Another game with a good spread, tight game. Uh, A and M. A and M. Give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a pop quiz that we can answer on the way back. I watched Love Rudy this. last night. <gasps> I watched. Love that movie. Great movie, right? Great, great, great movie. movie. I, I got uh, I got this TV cable service where it gives like 35 movie channels, and I'm flipping through them, and I found Rudy about uh, 15, 20 Rudy. minutes in. Rudy, 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 Rudy. What famous comedian is in Rudy? Bitch Which Vaughn. I did it. Did you just say that, or did the producer say that? Vince Vaughn. You just, I said it. <laughs> You got it. You got it. He's I the running back. That. I've seen that movie a thousand times. He, Yeah, he was the running back. They never really explained how he went from hating Rudy to all of a sudden loving him in the end. But that's it. Yeah, a young Vince Vaughn. How about that? Yeah. He, played, he plays the guy that threw the option Get pass. Out of here. He would, yeah. And then he threw the option pass. Yeah. Right. Love that movie. How about that? What a great movie. Oh, yeah. great. What a great, yeah, yeah. Just All that being said, I like so. AM Saturday. Yeah, me too, unfortunately. <laughs>
All right, welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan, joined by our good buddy Cam Stewart. Cam, we're talking Ooh. a little football, college football. We got cut down day in the NFL. Um, I don't know if there were any necessarily surprise cuts, but why, why not start the, there? Anything uh, surprise you today that would make you think you're going to bet one way versus the other? Or just no, typical these backups? Are just, yeah, it's backups, third string quarterbacks, and stiff, Scott. I, I did put another log on the fire with the Seahawks at over seven and a half wins. Uh, I taped all their games in the preseason, and the things that I saw from Mike McDonald and his coaching staff, it's not just – some things in the preseason, when you look, it's like, who cares? It's second and third stringers. I'm watching their first-round dra draft pick, Byron Murphy, out of Texas, take on double teams and triple teams. You know their seventh round – they have a seventh-round running back, Kenny McIntosh. The guy's, like, averaging, like, 20 yards a carry. He's, like, he's like their second, third back. So he's going to battle Charbonnet. I'm telling you, the defense looks a hell of a lot better. The problem with Pete Carroll was, guys, he was a great guy, great human being, but we don't need a cheerleader. We need a coach who's going to go in there and get things done. You come from the Baltimore Ravens tree. You come from the Harbaugh tree at Michigan. Me and Gabe were talking about this on our show. All the attention to detail. And I'm going to tell you, I think Geno Smith is going to have a bounce back year, and I'm very, very satisfied with Howell as a backup. I think Seattle's got a running game with Walker. I think they have underrated players. They've shored up their offensive line, getting a real center. And I'm telling you, this team, my Dave, Scott, they're seven and a half. I think they can win nine or ten games. I think they finish second. I think they're going to battle San Francisco. And I'm, Dave, you know me. I'm always negative. Like the way I talk about bet on the Leafs, why don't you just give it to the guy with the batted down how to outside the liquor store? Money, money mm. well spent. At least we know he's going to buy a bottle of liquor. Uh, you know, that's what that's the thing. At least yeah. he's getting a drink. Yeah. I can tell you that Leafs ticket, I'm not getting anything from it other than using it to start a small fire. So this is what we're talking about right now. Yeah, very small fire, Dave. So that's what I'm saying. I love that. I love that team. And I also did some crazy stuff. I, I, I found a 20, 28 to 1 for Saints' worst team in the league. It's probably not going to be the Saints. I just think, I think they're going to be horrible really? this year. And uh, mm. my biggest, yeah, my two biggest bets are Saints 7 and a half under. Everyone thinks they have an easy schedule. I don't think so. So we went over it. They say it's ranked like one of the easiest schedules. Okay, you got Carolina, Dallas, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Kansas City, Tampa Bay. Okay, Denver, uh, That those are winnable games. Chargers, can you throw that back up, Frank Font? Really appreciate it. Here we go. Falcons, at Browns, Giants, and then at the end, Green Bay. Like, they, they, literally... I don't think they're oh. going to beat any good teams. And I think Carolina is going to split with them. I think Atlanta could sweep okay. them. I have the Saints winning four to five games this year. Wow. Am I, am wow. I insane? Doesn't look I'll, I'll, no, I'll tell you one thing. If they win over eight, I'll be shocked. Scott, you know me. I'm Scottish. We can really stretch a penny. And I like to do a yeah. lot of multiple <laughs> bets. Hey, Cam, what do you got in your account? 120 active bets. Sure, there might be 10 and $20 golf futures and taking chicks at 6,000 to one and almost winning these bets. Uh, for the Brit women's mm -hmm. British Open, but I'm going to tell you, I love the Saints under seven and a half, and I love these season win totals for a couple teams, Dave. And it's also a market you know yep. you have to you have yep. to shop. I got Dallas at ten and a half under. I'm seeing books at like nine and a half and stuff now. So mm -hmm. it's a very yeah. volatile market. And Gabe and I talked about it. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. Uh, very hot today, 100 Fahrenheit in, in Toronto, if you can believe Oof. it. But I will say mm -hmm. this. Take unders rather than overs. The only over team that I took early was Seattle because they did a lot better than I thought they were going to do. I'm very excited about the season. The schedule's difficult. I'm not going to lie, but I think we can get nine. We discussed the uh, NFC North with Zig in the first mm -hmm. hour, and it was a really good breakdown. Um, he was buying the Bears uh, and the Bears over. He, he called it drinking the Caleb juice. Mm -hmm. Where are you with the Bears? Because I am not. I think the Bears go under. I, I think eight is the peak, but mm -hmm. Wetzel's kind of leaning on drinking the juice. Settle the break. Settle the tie here. Where are you at with the Bears? I think it's a great number, Dave, because I think they either, mm -hmm. like I've gone through it a million times, I think they went eight or nine, and I lean to eight with you. So to yep. me, when I, do, when I do season win total, if I don't see a two and a, like a one and a half, two game discrepancy, it's not bet. That's why, like, if Seattle's seven and a half, and I think they win nine, that's bettable. So that's the theory that I use for teams. It has to be, like, over one and a half. So if I think they're going to be two games better either way, that becomes a big bet for me. Here's the deal. Gotcha. Caleb Williams is a great player. But let's remember, even in the Pac-12, guys, he made mistakes. He got hurt. Sure, he looks fantastic in the preseason. So did Mac Jones. 
Like, let's put put the brakes on here a little bit, okay? Yeah. The thing is, the offensive line still needs to protect him. He will do well. There will be mistakes. I think they're de- the, the key to the Bears, their defense played really good at the end of the year. A lot of people yeah. are like smart sharps that I know, Dave, sharps versus dulls. A lot of people like Green Bay to regress. Like, I, I, and I kind of am thinking, you know, everyone thinks they're going to be amazing. I think Detroit wins 12 regular season games. I bet they're over a 10 and a half. You're selling me think, on that. Oh, I'm telling you, I think the Lions, yeah. I bet them to win the yep. Super Bowl at 15. It's yep. down to 12. I must be, I, I'm, I'm not even joking. Like, I, I like the Jets. I like the Lions. Ooh. Those are my teams Ooh. and the Bills. Those are the, those are the three futures that I bet. And I have a sprinkle on Seattle to do like better because they're my team if they have a miraculous year, which I still think they win nine games. So I'm kind of with you. I think the Lions are going to like, they, they need home field advantage. They almost won on the road against the Niners. As you guys saw, if, they screw, Campbell screwed up that game. He screwed it up. If they end up winning the division and getting home field throughout, they will have played of the 17 games in a regular season, 14 Perfect. in a dome. Yeah. Right. That's that's a big deal. Uh, quick shout that's out to you. my daughter and her teammates yeah. who are all watching back east right now. Shout Middleton out to the State Sierra Delta. Pan girls. Girls, they told my neighbor across the street. Right now. Don't let your it, kids it, hang out on the school roofs and drink like I did. And very lucky to be a broadcaster. Right. My hockey career went down the tubes. I told the ladies kid across the street. I went to a soccer game. Don't let them stop playing sports. Scholarships. Dave, you've been a great father. Sheriff Pan well, girls. Keep on knocking them out of the park. You can have fun, Thank but you know what I mean? Save the drinking for later on after your NCAA career. That's Thank what you. I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to tell you, Dave, Uncle you're Kent. a great father for getting your kids involved in sports. You know what sports does? It brings people together. This guy hates yes. this guy. Me and my buddy talked about it when we put in our NFL bets at the bar. Sport brings people together in a country that is divided. America, Canada, same thing. You're friends with everybody on your team. It helps you in life. Wetzel, by the way, my tennis underdogs 2-0 and last night. I split in the WNBA. You damn Seattle storm cost me a big parlay, but hit the under with the Mercury. Anyway, the Royals! Love you guys. Boom! Talk to you Boom. later. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow, Mort. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins.
Welcome back in game live prime time here on the grid. The action never stops. So just a couple never. seconds. Uh, thanks again to Cam Stewart. He'll uh, join uh, Gabe Renzi, top of the hour. Gabe and Cam will take over and uh, take you until uh, 1 a.m. Eastern time, TV and radio here on the grid. So uh, they're, they're doing it again. I, I don't know. Maybe the, the score. Oh, okay, it just flipped 4-2. to two. All right. And I was going to say it was 4-1 Atlanta over Minnesota, and they gave us 8.5 in the bottom of the seventh inning, which made no sense. But now it's actually 4-2. to two. But even that is not, it's still not not too bad. But they love these unders. They just love the uh, or they love the giving us a high number with the Atlanta Braves. Amazing. Uh, Padres and Cardinals tied at five as we go back to the baseball board. Brewers have taken a four three lead over the Giants minus five ninety. Wow. Um, well, you got the hater factor in there with, with the back end of the bullpen. Oh, actually, no, hater's been long gone. Never mind. Um, let me see a Josh Hader with Milwaukee. Colorado 6-2 in the fourth. Uh, Angels 1-0 over the tie. Uh, the Mets sees 1-0 already over Arizona. Hello. Ooh, Hello. Top of the second. Yeah, we're not going to get to the top of the third, I don't think. But um, who got the RBI for the Mets? If it's Lindor, then we're definitely live for our little okay, uh, same-game parlay. Now, let's see. Let's see. Hit refresh. If it was your guy, no. 0 for 1. Nothing happened. So, Bunch. the RBI was... Uh, yeah. Pete Alonzo, guess what? Home run. Mm. If you bet Pete Alonzo Homer, solo shot. Polar Bear. These Mets. How come we always, you know what? Seriously, we always have Mets graphics. I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder that? why. No yeah. matter what night, amazing? what day, yeah. what we're talking about. And it's um, it's always Mets all the time. What, so are they going to make the playoffs? Are they going to make the playoffs? I don't think so. I still say no. They're sitting on their wow. under. I don't. I don't think so. You know the the back end of that bullpen. Well, the bullpen in general. Forget just the back. The, the bullpen for the Mets stinks. So I, I don't. I don't think they're going to be able to catch the Braves. Braves win today. Well, they probably will win four uh, two. You never know. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't think they're going to overtake them. And they, they never. They never beat Atlanta head to head. So. Let me ask you, uh, Rangers and White Sox, right? They, they had four pitches literally in the top of the first inning before they call it, and the game is suspended. I've asked, like, great baseball minds, and no one seems to know, why do they suspend games versus just canceling games? Why, why wouldn't they just cancel this and just say, all right, we're starting the game fresh? I, I don't, like, no one can, if you Google it, it's like this long and Bitless, like, mumbo-jumbo. I don't know why they suspend games versus actually just canceling it. But I don't it's suspended. Know. So if your bet is – some some sites will hold your bet, right? Or, or is that an automatic – your bet wiped out? Oh, the rain out rule. We did it earlier. This is reason number 10.2 million why I'm glad I'm not in the book. Explaining yeah. this is a <laughs> nightmare. All right? Just give it back. Just what, what, four pitches. Give it all back. Yeah, I, I don't want to worry about it. I don't want to hold it. I give it all back right now. As soon as you tell me they ain't playing another out inning chance tonight, refund. Boom, back in your account. Come to the counter. I'll give you the ticket, money back, and a drink ticket in Vegas. We would do that in a heartbeat. I don't want to explain nothing. You don't have no action tomorrow if you want to bet it. Tomorrow, you got to bet it tomorrow. That's most of the time, that's the way this is. But, like, listen, it's a new age. There might be books that, you know, you have action in 24 hours. It carries over. The Padres just scored another run, 6-5. Guess who got the RBI? Guess. Guess who got the RBI? Jackson. Jackson Of Murrow? course he did. Yes. Oof, Eighth boy's in, done. Seventh inning, two out base hit. Jackson wow. Merrill. Knocks in the go-ahead run. 6-5 Padres. Man, oh, man. This is unreal. These Padres just keep winning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to get some futures you, on them. Mm. Yeah. Between mm. the Dodgers, Padres, and Diamondbacks, that NL West is just loaded, right? I mean, World if, if you're team. a Rockies fan, you're a Colorado fan, you got no hope. You, you might as well just, like, forget it. We're, we're done. Uh, we're done. Um, Are they going to lose 100 the games? Yeah. Yes, I, I do think they will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Tough losing a hundred. That's a lot of losses. That's a lot of losses, losses, right? But the White Sox already have. Yeah. Them, by the way, one hundred one. One hundred one. One hundred one. Yeah. <laughs> Good news is they didn't lose tonight. Just right. We'll postpone it till tomorrow. Right. Yep. All right. Let's go. Strikes in the top and Great bottom job. of the third. Here we go for our SPP and over Tampa Bay, Seattle. Both. <laughs> 